in today's show. We update the sleepers for fantasy basketball. Michael Bolton, he's awake. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. Now, I did a sleeper and bust video weeks ago. But you know that when that was relevant at the time, I, I believe I said on those videos, I'm recording this on September X. Shit can change. Shit has changed. There's been multiple updates to the Yahoo rankings and to the ESPN rankings since then. So let's update it. Let's give you an updated look at where those ranks sit. And of course, as always happens with Yahoo, those rankings have tightened up tremendously. Since when they started at the start of September, there's been gigantic changes, a lot of them very reminiscent to how my projections look, which is fine if they want to make adjustments based on what I think, or coincidentally, we have the same opinion, that's totally fine. It just makes it harder to find values in those drafts, and you've got to be aware of that. One of the advantages of drafting early on Yahoo is getting a lot of steals really really in those later rounds and guys who are completely misvalued, whereas now those rankings and ADPs come in a tremendous amount. ESPN, on the other hand, maybe there's still a few values out there. There's still some on Yahoo, but probably double to triple the amount that there is. Uh, or there is probably double or triple the amount on ESPN. In comparison to, uh, to where Yahoo sits, reminder, Wednesday, 4 p.m. Eastern, going through to about 8 p.m. Eastern, live stream on the YouTube channel, where we are going to be joined by a bunch of fantasy analysts, Adam King, Daniel, Daniel, I don't know what I call it, Dan Besbris, um, uh, Mike Catron, Alex Reclean, um, Zach Hanshu coming on, Jared Johnson's coming on. Um, we're going to be answering your questions. I'm going to be getting some hosts from the Locked On Podcast Network coming on. don't know exactly who, probably Gavin Shaw from Locked On Knicks, going to have Kuka Hill talking about Pistons as well. Might get some other national NBA guys on there just to have a chat and to answer your questions. So if there is any questions as our like a live mailbag, but we're going to be going for a long time to get all those final questions and thoughts in uh, on that show, 4 p.m. Uh, Wednesday, 4 p.m. Eastern Wednesday on the YouTube channel. But let's let's talk about this right now, like we're going to talk about, and uh, let's look at sleepers. And we will start with the old Yahoo site and some sleepers. Now, most of these are later type picks. There are some guys, I think, and I did this the other day, this video on this the other day, where I went through yeah every round and said, these are the must-draft players in these rounds because yeah I think that they're sliding in these areas, so giving that sort of you know, 10 to 15 or 20 spot value in the middle rounds, which is not a gigantic amount. These ones here that I'm looking at on Yahoo, um, that I'm listed here as sleepers, they're ones I think are providing tremendous value and some interesting late round picks. Yeah, probably the number one guy that I've got on Yahoo is Josh Giddy, who I think has a real chance to crack the top 100. You saw me and Jared Johnson debate that on the ADP battle last week. He's super high on Giddy. Somehow he's higher than me on Giddy. I think Giddy can crack the top 100, but he sits at 151 on Yahoo at the moment. I wouldn't wait till round 13 or even round 12. I'd be happy to grab him in round 11 or even round 10, to be honest. I think he's like a round nine type player, but round 11, if you want to grab him there, fine. He is going to be, unless something weird happens, he's going to be the starting point guard for the Thunder. He might he might average six and a half to seven assists per game and the same amount of rebounds. It might only be 11 points on 40% shooting. That's the concern. But I think he can get a steal plus plus those rebounds, plus those assists. And he might actually surprise us with some of the other areas of his uh, game. So I'm really interested to see what he can do. But a high lottery pick with a valuable skill set with a, a rare category like assists or a hard-to-find category like assists, who's going to play 30 minutes a night, yeah, that, that's sign me up. Like, there's a, so much fantasy value in getting a guy um, like that. So I like him there. Now, in Memphis, DeAnthony Melton, I think, is a really good late pick. It looks like they're going to bring Kyle Anderson off the bench. I'm out on Anderson as a fantasy option. But I think someone who we've got to look at there, because they have brought Melton's yeah, rank into about 120, 130, which I'm not sure is, you know, I'm not sure that's the value that we're, 
that we're necessarily looking for. It's fine to draft him there, but it doesn't stand out like Dogs Balls going, wow, that's tremendous value. He's into 131 on Yahoo. So it's not you know, fantastic. It's still a little bit of value, but it's not great. I think if we look at Desmond Bain, he's at 168. Um, I love that. I think he's going to start. I think he can yeah, be at least like that late round guy. Like if he averaged 16 points with three threes per game, that's not insane. 1.2 steals, three assists, four rebounds. Like they're not bad numbers. They're not well, they're the greatest, but they're not bad. But maybe he actually blows up. And Dylan Brooks decides, I'm not the greatest player you know, on earth and need to take every shot in the world. Because that is Dylan Brooks' mantra, obviously. If Dylan Brooks is concentrated on being a 3 and D wing and actually doing the things that he's good at, and that is being a defensive wing, that team would be a lot better. And let Morant and Jackson and and Bain take the shots rather than Brooks chuck up 20 of them and hit four. So I really like getting Bain in those last rounds. I like Isaiah Roby. He's at 160. If that, if 156 players get picked in a standard Yahoo draft. So he's out undrafted there. It's going to be their starting center, I would guess. And if not immediately, it will be really soon. He'll play 23, 24 minutes almost minimum. And then that'll push up to 27, I think. I'm not saying that he's going to be a top 80 player because I don't think that he will be. But there's great value for him with that last pick, I believe. I'm really interested to see uh, what he is, uh, what he's able to do. And yeah, that is going, to, is going to depend on how they run that and what they, where they decide to play and whether it is starter or off the bench. But you've got to look at him as a last round pick. I'm really interested in, in him as a last round selection. If you are looking though to start a fantasy basketball league, and you've got friends who are not experienced playing fantasy basketball, Sleeper might be the option for you. Sleeper is a new fantasy app in the fantasy basketball space. They've been around for football for a while. They offer points-only formats. That's all they offer. And they use their exclusive game pick format, which means that you pick one game for each player for the week. So you don't have to worry about who plays more games. You just choose one game. So it's very much copying a fantasy football system. So if you're bringing people over who haven't played fantasy basketball and play fantasy football, Sleeper is a very easy transition to get into the game of fantasy basketball. Sorry, the superior game of fantasy basketball. Sleeper's app is very, very clean. The interface looks great. The draft room is easy to use. You can draft off your phone or off their web client as well. They have dynasty formats and keeper leagues and third round reversal, a great chat function. Everything about the app just looks modern. It looks sleek. It looks great to use. And the simplicity of bringing those casual fans in is great. We always want more people to play fantasy basketball and sleep out could be a good way for you to go about that. So download the app, start a league with your friends and enjoy the sleeper experience. All right, let's go back to look at some more sleepers there over on oh, sleepers on Yahoo. Terrence Mann's at 179. It doesn't look like he's going to start. It's going to be Eric Bledsoe. And I think there is some areas where Mann is getting overrated, but it's not reflective or reflected in his uh, Yahoo rank. I thought that he might get overrated to a degree where he's yeah, coming in, getting drafted at 110, 120, but it hasn't been the case. So as a last round player for Terrence Mann, I think maybe that's you know, somewhat impacted by the fact that Bledsoe is going to start. And, you know, and I thought that the playoff performance that Mann put up last year would really inflate his numbers, but it hasn't happened, surprisingly. So I think Mann in the last round is fine. Whether he, I don't think he gets 31, 32 minutes. He doesn't have gigantic upside. In fact, I, I do think that as an overall play, he's being maybe a little bit overrated. But at that sort of area, last round pick with some upside, if Bledsoe falters or Batum gets hurt or Jackson gets hurt even, there is some value there for Terrence Mann. So I do like him as a sleeper option. LaMarcus Aldridge, he's so old, he probably does need to ha take a nap. But at 174, for a bloke who came in last season, mid-year, beat out Blake Griffin immediately to be the starting center, looked okay, and his preseason has been, again, okay. I think it's going to be him or Griffin that starts. But if Aldridge can work his way into 27 minutes, he will beat that number. He's not going back to 1920 Aldridge as a top 40 player. He had a significant drop-off last year. But he was also much better in those five games in Brooklyn than he was in San Antonio. And there's absolutely no reason that Aldridge couldn't be a top 100, 110 guy this season. Centers are hard to find. Good centers after that you know, top 70. It's hard to get a good one. You're resorting to Mason Plumleys. You get Aldridge with your last pick with some upside. And if Kyrie misses time, more usage might go his way too. I like it. Another center, Precious Achua. He's ranked 234th. 
I do, but and I know people will disagree with me on this. I think that they're going to start him. I now let, let's rephrase a couple of things. I do not believe that Precious Achua is going to develop into a good NBA center. I, I just don't have that faith in him. I think he's a little bit too um, out of control offensively and um, defensively. I don't think he's as good as some numbers make him out to be. Uh, that, that's just a personal opinion, Achua. And it's only been one year, but I didn't like him coming out of college. I didn't like what I saw last season. So if I marry those two things up, my faith in him is is low. That's not to say that he can't improve. And I, I, if he does, I change my mind on that, no problem. But you know, saying, well, yeah, Ken Birch is just going to come straight back from him dealing with health and safety protocols and he'll start. Like, Ken Birch is not good. Ken Birch is absolutely adequate. He's probably the worst starting center in the NBA. And if you've got a 29-year-old Ken Birch versus a 20-year-old Precious Achua and their performances are pretty similar, you just go with the younger bloke. And I think if he's, he's established himself in that role now, there's no Boucher, there's no Siakam, there's no Birch at the moment. Yeah, take a flyer on Precious. In terms of fantasy numbers, I, I do think Precious can put up better performances than what Birch can. And I would much rather take a last round flyer on Achua than I would on Birch. I just think that he... And, look, and he's putting up gigantic steal numbers in the preseason, which isn't real for Precious. He can't maintain that number. I think you know, in his entire college career, I think he had 34 steals in 31 games. He's had like nine in three preseason games or something like that, eight. Like he's had like almost his whole college, yeah, third of his college production in three games. And last season he was, he had like a, I think 10 steals for the season or some crazy numbers like that, All right? So that's not going to continue, but he can rebound, he can get um, blocks, he can get some steals. His, his free throws are poor, but there is something there. Dwight Powell is not sexy. I mean, he's an attractive man, but he's not a sexy sexy fantasy player. He's ranked 248th. He's going to be their starting center. And one of the things with Dwight Powell is he always turns in good fantasy numbers because he's a very high field goal percentage player with a really solid free throw percentage. And he gets good steals. And those things don't flash. He might average nine points and seven rebounds. And you go, why am I bothering with a bloke like that? But then he shoots 67% from the field and 75 from the line. And if you do give a shit about turnovers, which you shouldn't, but if you do, he gets none of those as well. And that bumps him up. Now, I'm not saying that he's a great, huge upside guy, but I think he's going to be the starter in Dallas. And he's going to play 24 to 25 minutes. And if somehow he plays 28, he might actually be a top 100 guy. And you can get him late. And then, of course, Scotty Barnes. Barnes's opportunity is wide open. There's no Siakam and there's no Boucher. He is probably going to be an opening night starter at Power Ford. There are going to be gigantic problems with his uh, free throw percentage. His scoring and usage is going to be low. He might have some issues with his field goal percentage and he won't hit threes, but he will generate assists and he will generate some defensive stats. Now, I've heard people going wild on Barnes and drafting him at like pick 90 or pick 100, which is way too high for me, way too high. But Yahoo's got him at 213. So you've got to scroll down that list to find him. And if you want to take him in round 12, go ahead. Just be aware that, again, when Siakam does return, it is going to have an impact. It, it can't not have an impact on him. It will have some impact, and then Boucher is one. And if they want to eliminate Boucher from the rotation to play Barnes, I think that's a totally justifiable decision. Boucher is 29 and not that good. But they're not going to do that to Siakam. Right? So that is going to have some impact on Barnesy. But still, as a guy that you, you can take with your last pick or your 12th pick, especially for early on in the season... I do think that um, I do think that it makes quite a bit of sense. How good was the NFL yesterday? My uh, my son's team, the Chargers, what a game against the Browns! If, he, if I had to put a bet on it, I know where I would have gone to do it, and that is at Bet Online, the number one spot for all pro and college football action this season. With a new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, Bet Online continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today using our promo code Locked On to get a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit from football, basketball, boxing, or even your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait. Take advantage of all of the great offers that they have for the 2021 season. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. BetOnline is where the game starts. All right, let's now head across to the... I don't know. What's the word I'm looking for? Foolishness? Kids cover your ears? Dumb fuckery? That is the ESPN ranks. 
let's just start it off by looking, you know, you, you head into your draft. And I said I didn't include many early ones on Yahoo because they're all relatively tight in terms of their value. But when you get into a draft and you see Zach Levine, the skater boy, at number 43, you go, hold up. Like a fourth round player for a top 20 guy. Yes, there will be some sort of a drop off for him this season. Not this much. This is ridiculous. So there you go. Zach Levine, 43. And then we just keep going down the list. Percentages. Chris Tapp's at 73. I, I know he might get hurt. I know that. He also might be a top 25 player. So taking that flyer on him at pick 50, 48, 55, 60, 65 for a top 20 option. Like if he averaged 23 with eight boards, two blocks, two and a half, three, shot 85 from the line and 50% from the field. You're not going to come out and say, well, I never saw that coming. That's amazing. How, how can Porzingis do that? If I said he played 80 games, you'd say, Josh, get your hand off it. And I'm not suggesting he's going to play 80 games. But you play 70 games and put up those numbers and you're drafting him at 73. <laughs> All right, no worries. It's ridiculous. And then Jaron Jackson at 81. What? 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 Last year, he played 23 minutes a night and he was 77th ranked player. Is he going to play 23 minutes a night? No. Could he get hurt? Maybe. Is he actually injury prone? No. He had a torn meniscus. That's it. That does, that's, not a, that's not a recurring problem that he had. He had one injury. 81. Look, again, Jaron can be a top 40 guy, maybe top 30 player this year. Him down at 81 makes no sense. But I am, and if you are on YouTube, you can see this coming. If you are on audio, you don't know what I'm going to say. But the most baffling ranking in any fantasy basketball scenario is coming up. Jonas Vassal Inuansas. Why is Jonas Valanciunas, the 30th ranked player last season, ranked 115th? I know that he's gone to another team. Is ESPN just massive Billy Hernan Gomez fans? They think that Jackson Hayes is playing 32 minutes a night? I would love to hear the justification for why Valanciunas is ranked 115th. They couldn't spell the name. They forgot about him. There was a computer error. The diacritical accents on his name screwed up the process. 115th. Kids. Ears. Fuck me. What? 115th. That doesn't make any sense. Anyway, just take that and enjoy it. Gordon Hayward's at 112th. Hayward has weird injuries. I know that. 112th, round 10, is craziness. He was a top 50 per game player last year. You can't come out and tell me he's going to be healthy. But you also can't come out and tell me he's going to miss 30 games because you don't know that. And getting a guy, again, 65 spots below where he probably should be, it's pretty ridiculous. Did I say Jonas Valanciunas was the stupidest ranking? Maybe Kevin Porter at 134th is. Now, as you know, Porter has some significant warts to his game. Look, that, that's all fine. But last season, his first real prolonged action, he was 124th. And half of those games played alongside John Wall. Now, there is no John Wall. There is Jalen Green. But John Wall, the impediment with John Wall is the ball was out of Porter's hands and he wasn't getting the assists. So Porter's going to get the assists. I still have significant worries about his lack of defense, his poor free throw shooting, and his poor field goal percentage. That, all that still exists. But outside the top 100 is theft. Now, thankfully, most ESPN drafters are a little bit smarter than this, and his ADP is 112. That's still probably 40 spots off, but 134 is nonsense. And let's, let's also just get something clear here. A standard ESPN league... A standard league, when you default an ESPN league, it is 10 teams, 30, 13 players, 130 roster spots. So Kevin Porter on a default ESPN league is someone that they suggest should not be drafted. Wrap your head around it for a sec. Just wrap your head around it. Have a think. Have a think about the logic behind that. And then when you find, fail to find that logic, just understand that you can get him at a discount. Kelly Lynx at 130. He won't be as good as he was in Houston, but 130 is ridiculous. He should be able to at least crack the top 100. And you can extract 30 spots of value for him down there towards the end of that draft. I really like that. Evan Mobley is at 169th. I think Mobley looks great. I think they, not I think, they are going to start him. 
He's going to play 30 plus minutes. People say, oh, I'm avoiding him because you know, there's Kevin Love and there's Lowry Market and all that. They are going to play... They Evan Mobley, right, as, as things currently stand... Or, okay, in two months' time, he will be the best player in that front court, ahead of Love, ahead of Market, and ahead of Allen. I, I feel pretty confident in saying that. He's going to get blocks and rebounds. He's getting steals. He can pass. I think he's going to score a little bit. It might, there'll be some rocky times for sure. But 169th, again, means you are 39 spots away from being drafted. Even in a 12-team league, you're undraftable. Nonsense. He can be a top 100 player. And I think when we hit February onwards, he'll probably be like a top 70, top 60 player. 169th is foolish. Now, Jordan Poole at 266, it made no sense back in August. It made no sense in September to have him there. It makes zero sense. Now, look, at negative sense to have him there now. Jordan Poole is lighting it up in fantasy. And of course, it is the preseason. But on a per-game basis in the preseason, he's the number one fantasy player. I'm not expecting him to be a top 10, 20, 50, 70, 100 guy, or maybe top 100. And he will lose some value when Clay returns. But 266 is insanity. You want to take him in round nine, round 10? Go ahead with Jordan Poole. Go ahead. 266 is, it's batshit insane. There's, there's no reason to have him down that low. Again, it's it's a laziness. It's a lack of updates for him. And unlike Yahoo, I've got two pages of sleepers on ESPN. Let's have a look at the rest. Daniel Gafford's at 164. Yes, there is an issue with what happens when Thomas Bryant returns. But he can be top 100 before that easily. And if they're looking for defense, they're not going to find it from Harrell or they're not going to find it from Tom Bryant. So Gafford probably has some sort of a role there. Love it. 164. De'Anthony Melton, the wave pool. He's at 208. I said that on Yahoo, he'd come in a little bit too far. 208. Come on. Come on, guys. I know that Taylor Jenkins and the Taylor Jenkins experience is frustrating when dealing with Melton, but he was 151st last year in 20 minutes. Pretty confident that 20 minutes is going to push up a little bit. Even if it's one or two minutes, it's going to push up. So you're already getting value at 208. I don't know how you look at this and go, well, Melton last year was 150th. 150th. He's going to be way worse this year. I don't know how you can think about it that way. Um, yeah. One, two, three, four, five. He's looked great, Mo Bumber, in preseason. Happily taking him in round 10. As I have said, and you all know what I'm going to say here, I've said it a million times. If him and Wendell Carter play the same minutes... Bumba, you take every day of the week. I think that Carter is still the better player, but we are seeing Bumba play at a much higher level than we have in the past. But more importantly, we are we saw them actually play together the other day, but we're seeing Bumba get 24 minutes. 24 minutes for Mo Bumba's top 100 type options. And he's at 241. Take him in round nine, sure. Round 10, yep. 241, guys. I talked about Dwight Powell already. He's at 221 on ESPN. There's some interesting value there. He's not as upsidey as Gafford or Bumber or Melton. They've even got Nerlens Noel at 152, who I think is probably going to start, at least at the beginning of the year until Mitchell Robinson returns. 28 minutes of Nerlens Noel's top 70. 22 minutes of Nerlens Noel's top 100. 152nd is a steal. I know, I'm, I know DeAndre Hunter has knee issues, and I am a little bit worried about them. But he's 210th. So that means don't draft him in a 10-team league, 12-team league, 14-team league, 16-team league. Which is obviously objectively wrong. In the 110 to 120 range, round 10, draft DeAndre Hunter. I do not think that the 20 games that we saw pre-knee injury is any... Is, is who I don't think that's who he is. I think there was some uh, unsustainable shooting and usage happening there, which I don't think is real moving forward. But 210 is ridiculous. And then two blokes who are unranked. Jaden McDaniels, who I'm souring on a little bit, but I don't mind him in, say, a round 12, round 13 scenario as a starter in, in Minnesota. There's just not enough usage to go around. And Farden Will Barton, who we haven't seen in the preseason dealing with an ankle problem, but he's going to be a starter, I would think, unless it's Bones Highland. By the way, Bones Highland, a great last round pick as well. We've talked about him plenty on this show. But Will Barton, Jaden McDaniels, both unranked on ESPN. Unranked. Um, which again, they're great late picks. Round 11, round 12, round 13. 
yeah, I, I could have thrown you. You could throw in Precious as an option here. You could throw in um, a Bone Thailand. You can throw in those sort of guys as flies too. But there's just so many options available on ESPN in different areas of the draft. So, again, I'm recording this on the 12th of October. If they do make any updates, ESPN or Yahoo, to their rankings after that, well, I apologize, but this is where we sit. So they are a bunch of sleepers, about 30 sleepers there across two sides. And again, if you go back and look at my must-draft player shows, um, that gives you ideas in each round where rankings sit. Um, you'll see it on the mock drafts when I go through and draft people. There's just so much. Info. Plus, all the projections at basketballmonster.com to see how guys are valued up to the minute as information comes in. Guys, that will do it for today's show. Follow us on Apple Podcasts, or Google po- Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on that old Odyssey app while on YouTube. You know what to do. One thumb, two thumbs, throw them up the middle, ring the notification bell, hit the subscribe button, drop your comments down below. I don't know, drop whatever comment you want. Tell me which one of those is the most ridiculous. Is it Balanchunas? Is it Kevin Porter? Is it Jordan Poole? Which one was the most ridiculous ones of those ranks, guys? Drop it all in the comments below. All right, guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.